introduce you to yeah, like Todd Goodrich. He is a university. He is the University of Montana photographer. Okay. And most of the photos you see on official publications are yours. Okay. And I also want to thank him for taking the time to come share his expertise with us. He did say it's going to be pretty casual. He doesn't present. He talks. <laughs> so whenever he gets ready to to talk. I will turn the lights down. Yeah, I'm going to go there for a minute. Okay, and I did want to let you know that we will be videoing this, so just to let you know. <laughs> so, uh, she gave me a bit of a rundown of what you guys do in the class. What I want to know is what are you going to do with what you learned from the class? Where are you going with this stuff? Get someone to do it. Oh, uh, you know, I'm a marketing major in my class major too. I just thought, uh, like, you know, you need to know technology to do marketing well. So I kind of thought this is like one of those things that can help, like, kind of beat out concepts and themes that you have in person with people. Okay. I think, I think that this class will uh, help me. I guess to communicate with, with people that are working on projects that I'll be doing in the future and it'll just give me a better understanding of what they're going through and how to like manage that properly as it as it helps me do. You guys are are you mostly business students or education? Business. Business is okay. um, so Okay, so you got to what are you doing here? Um, Todd, the class is actually one of the requirements for people that are going to teach business, but they have to have a business degree in order to teach. Business. And Kathleen is a one fine example of one of those ones. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about just photographs in general and kind of how things are changing in this wonderful world of digital photography, which is. Uh, if you don't keep track of what's going on, you fall behind in the past, which I'm finding out every day. <laughs> we were just talking about how oh, I'm learning video the videos about that. I kind of have to do my job around the world, so you with me. So, uh, but let's just talk about basic photography. Uh, everybody, how many of you guys have an iPhone or a Samsung, something you take pictures with, and you're updating Facebook all the time, Instagram? Uh, so, in this world, everybody's doing that, and the only difference is there's a lot of crap out there, <laughs> and uh, everybody can put up whatever they want to put up, and sometimes the images aren't that good. Uh, so, what I'd like to talk to you guys about is putting up good images. It's something that, that when people see it, they they respond to it, they like it. Uh, what do you think the biggest reason we, we use it just for? What are we doing with it? Sharing. Sharing? Okay. Uh, what's that? Entertainment. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, now, to keep a memory of something. Okay. That's, that, that's, that's an all valid thing. Bottom line, you tell the story. Uh, really, all those things, every answer you just gave. In the end, it's a story, a historical story, you're entertaining somebody, but it's all a story. And you're doing a visual rather than words and text. Uh, so well, that's what I do a lot here, and even more so now. It seems like uh, now when I shoot an event, people want a gallery. They want to see photos right away. So I have to go through my photos and pick up the ones I think tell the story of whatever the event was. Whether it's a football game or uh, a rock concert, you know, anything. So, uh, more and more, I, I, I think what we see on the internet is getting better all the time. Um, but for a long time, there were a lot of people just snapping away and they throw up all these images. And how many people have friends who they went on some trip somewhere and then they always throw up a gallery of their trip? And really, when you look through that gallery of 60 pictures that they put up, how many of you really want to see? We got about five tops. Yeah, one, five. So, so that's that's kind of what I want to talk to you guys about is about showing images that are worth seeing. Um, this it sounds to me like you're going to be using stuff in marketing and and uh, for projects, and you just don't want to throw up uh, 
put a crap load of images so you can have it. You want to throw up something that looks good. And um, so if you don't know, want to talk about images and um, what makes a good image, and there's go forever about that uh, rule of thirds, uh, the law of standard images all the time, put something on the side, things like that. But I'd rather show you a little bit about how the workflow works in today's world. And so when you get your images and you go shoot something and you want to figure out what to do with them, you just kind of have an idea of how it all works. Uh, so I just kind of I'm going to run you through my thought processes after I shoot an event. Now I go through and pick out some images of what I end up. Um, it might be a little uh, boring that way, but I think what you'll, what you'll have an idea of how you can take a bunch of images, go through them, pick out what's the best, edit them appropriately. I mean, you guys are all using Photoshop now. We're going, to, we're going to start using it probably next week. Next week? Oh, okay. Uh, have anybody used it yet? Yeah. Um, older versions. The Photoshop Elements, which is pretty much any computer you buy now, it's a, it's a Windows version that usually comes with that. Um, uh, the, the Macs don't always, but... No, I do But, um... Any, how do you all use image editing software of some kind? Crop images and... Since that's uh, generally what you shoot with your camera, and you just uh, have the downloads are awesome by the way now. Is it you can get anybody um, the Instagram which you do all the cool uh, filtering and stuff. Uh, but uh, the things that you get, they need some editing, and uh, if you can edit them a little bit, you just have a little bit of knowledge about it, and you can make your images look a whole lot better. Simple crop. Can, can make a, a good image look great. You take away the extraneous information that's not added to the image, not making it look better, and you get rid of it. And that's as simple as that. It's just crop it out. And that one little thing, which I think everybody can figure out how to do on pretty much any imaging software, can make a huge difference. Uh, as you use the software more, you're going to find out that you can do all kinds of cool things. And uh, um, Photoshop. If you can imagine doing something to an image, you pretty much figure out a way to do it. It's amazing. It's, I think it's the most amazing software I've ever touched. Uh, you, you can make someone who's not going me look good. Imagine, you know, I mean, that'd be a stretch. <laughs> Anyways, I want to show you. So, one of the things we do in our office is we have to come up with concepts for publications and stories. How many, how many people have had class to check in more? You, you're good at school. We're having it right now, too. Yeah. yeah. So we had to do a photo story, uh, story in, our, in our new magazine about Jackie's research with uh, technology that uses uh, nature's, what's already out there in nature, and they take, they take like, the way this insect uses the same fly, and they apply that to modern technology to better things for airplanes. Um, so we had almost a concept here, we were, we were just kind of, we didn't have anything visually to do that. So we just tried to, the, the editor had this idea of blending her into uh, nature. We wanted to show her on the cover of the story about her, not about the, the, the research entirely. So uh, this is this is how we, we kind of work we work on this project, and it comes out. So you start out with something basic like nature. So we were it was all we were trying to come up with an idea. We couldn't come up with much, so we threw them with the leaves. They're everywhere. And <laughs> so we took the leaves. We made a giant leaf pattern. And then there we were trying to blend Jackie into it. So we took a picture of Jackie. Basic portrait of Jackie. This is squashed. This is squashed on my screen. It's squashed. Well, they had it narrowed down so they do get on the screen. Uh, it has to do with the projector. Oh, okay. Well, 
I'm going to throw a gallery up or, or try to tell the story of this event. Uh, nobody's going to want to look at all these. And a lot of them are back. I mean, every photographer has to be glory of vision. You can take crap load images, knowing full well that some of them aren't going to be very good. And just dump them later. So it's done in the old days. Uh, so, this is what I have to do now, if I, if I come back to my office and I gotta go through these images, you just uh, you gotta choose. What I wanna show in the convocation is the presidents and the staff and the faculty are welcoming these students. That's my story to tell. Uh, my audience is going to be anybody who comes to the University of Montana website. And that's something to keep in mind anytime you're doing this, who's your audience? So I think marketing people will tell you every time your audience, keeping your audience in mind is always very important. Um, so we want the students, you know, we want the students to go click on this site to see themselves. We want their parents to go click on this site to see their students. We want, so we gotta tell the story. So we go through and I gotta pick out the photos that we want. You know, happy students, always a good thing. We're trying to sell the University of Montana. Um, the president talking to students, always a good thing. Bringing some fun. Um, more students. It's all about the students. But so far, looking through, I haven't seen the signature image that the it's gonna jump off the page and say this is the one that they want this to catch their eyes and they want to open up something. So uh just keep working it. And eventually you find the shot you want. And this view to me pretty much captured event. Is that a wide angle lens? Yeah. And uh, ended up being so. Did you see all things I went through? These are the edits I chose to be put in the gallery. One of those. Have the students. Two of those. Band playing. That was the lead photo. That one came at the end. So you can see the president speaking to the kids. This is coming in. We had a list in our enrollment director and our student body president. Hmm. And then at the end, they had these gathering around bonfires to encourage individual schools to get this good time to meet people who work in school. So, <coughs> so as you can see, I picked about 15 images out of all that to tell the story. And editing and cropping and all that makes a difference. And like you said, the wide angle lens makes a huge difference. Um, equipment. <coughs> I'm a little bit. Equipment is you can do so much with your hand with your camera in your town. It's ridiculous. But um, having the gear to do cool things is always a lot of fun. This this lens is a fisheye lens, and it allows me to store things to a degree that is. Like fishes, I don't even know who's seen them, but it just makes it all so circular. And that is, is just a, a huge, huge benefit when you're trying to get something to catch somebody's eye. Uh, one of my mentors taught me a long time ago said, uh, the world sees, everybody sees everything I love. That's everybody's point of view. Give them something different. Don't take that standard image of them right here. Instead of taking a wide lens, store it, make it a little funky, use a telephoto to tighten it up, uh, or change the angle. And that's the easiest thing anybody can do. Um, 
picture of you right now, boom right there, okay, that's nice. If I can help here with the way the lens is shoot up, you look long, you look big, you look cool. Um, so changing your angle is, is, so when you're taking pictures, think about it. Think about, uh, okay, I can take this picture of this, these kids standing here right now. Uh, maybe maybe you just take a picture of the three kids who, uh, they're putting out a record album or something, and you want a picture of them. Say these kids just made their little, their little album. Um, so they, you know, they're going to do the pose, the rock star pose, the album cover pose. One's this way, one's over here, and I like he's not involved. But that's a, that's one way. That's one way to do it. But the other thing is, you can stand on the table and shoot down at them, and then they're going to look looking up at you, and it makes it a little bit different. But just just take that into mind when you're taking images. How can I make this image different? How can I make it more interesting? That's what uh, that's the biggest challenge I have every day. I work at the University of Montana. I've been here 22 years, and five more before that I was a student. Um, they all has not changed, but somehow I've got to come up with a new image that makes it look interesting. <laughs> so it's a constant battle for me to always come up with a new way to make it look interesting. Man. And I, I think that little piece of advice right there, change your angle, move around, always keep in mind how to make this look different, edgy, different, not what everybody sees here. <coughs> keep that in mind all the time and it will help your images in the end, always look better. For changing the angle, that's the nice thing ever had. Uh, equipment can be very expensive if you want to spend a whole lot of money. You're very well off. I can't afford this equipment. I, mean, I work for the University of Montana. That's the only way I have it. Uh, and even that, it took me, oh, I don't know, many requests and lots of money to get this particular equipment. Cost coffee some. <laughs> and uh, this camera body uh, I just got this year, which uh, is listing us a six thousand dollar right there. And it does live HD video. Everything you want to do with it. You can, 16 megapixel images, um, 12 frames a second, I think. I need two for sports. So, photography is just like anything else. If you want to spend a bunch of money on it, you sure can. Uh, it's also cost prohibitive because a lot of people can't afford that stuff. But, like I said, uh, cameras and phones are getting so much better now, and you can go buy a for $400, you can get a pretty nice camera and do a lot of things. Uh, so you don't have to have all this. Um, this, this, my Blackberry, how old is that? I mean, this is ancient compared to what you guys are using now. I, the, I think it's a one megapixel image that comes out of this. It's, can't do anything. So you guys are, you, you're told to all, uh, how, many, how many megapixels are you guys doing all this stuff? You know? It's like six or eight. Yeah, yeah. Or eight. You can do just about anything. Make, make a big boy. You can make a great big print I and mean, a really good quality. So it's the cost of being a photographer is changing in many ways because of that. Uh, I like to think that there's still good uses for that. <laughs> and I'll show you an example. Um, sports. I have to shoot a lot of sports. So when I go to a basketball game, or a football game, I shoot a lot of images. The idea that when you shoot something like this, you, you're going to take a whole bunch of pictures just to get a few good ones, because it's always moving, it's action, it's always going to work. Um, so if you guys are going to be doing some marketing thing for uh, Outdoor company, a kayaking company, or something, you're gonna, you're gonna have to deal with this kind of stuff, get an action, and try to get a great shot. And uh, it's so be, be ready to take a whole bunch of photos and hope to get two that look great. You know, that's that's kind of how sports photography always is, action photography. So this is gonna be that. All these raw files are really good. I shoot raw. Um, I don't know if you guys know the distinction between a raw file and a JPEG. And, um, 
it's it's kind of hard to explain, but I'll try to. I'm really good at doing these down because I'm pretty much so. Eight, 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 uh, eight bits of information. Does that make, does that make sense? Eight bits? Yeah. Uh, a JPEG uses eight bits of information to where it stores all this information. So eight bits per pixel. Eight bits per pixel. Okay. So uh, if you shoot a raw file, it will store thirty-two bits per pixel, which is a lot more uh, more information. So when you shoot a raw file. If you're someone like me, you, you need that because let's say I take a picture here, it's kind of dark, uh, but it's bright back there. Um, but I want to bring up the shadow detail out of him so I can so he kind of matches that front back part of the room. I can do that with raw file. I can take the shadow detail and move it over and you can see his face. Uh, if I had a JPEG, I couldn't do that. I don't have any bits of information. People allow me to do that. There's not enough information to bring me. The detail out of this into his face, and I can make it kind of match up the background. Um, so that's why I should draw. It also takes a whole lot more computer space uh, to do it because it's a lot more information. So most people don't shoot raw; they shoot JPEGs, and uh, for most everything, JPEGs are perfectly good. Uh, so I, I, I wouldn't expect you guys to do a lot of raw work, but that's why it's taking so long to show up. If you wanted to take raw photos, how might you set your camera or something? Well, first, study camera is capable of that. And uh, not all of our uh, lower iPhones will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think your iPhones will do that either. So, um, so yeah, first you got to know capable of yeah. the, mid, the mid to high range, you know, the borderline professional <laughs> ones are all doing that now. So you, you can get a camera for about uh, uh, eight eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars. They'll do that and probably shoot high definition video too. Mm -hmm. um, so budgets being what they are, I know that that's never, especially anywhere from the university. The only reason I was able to get the two new things that that big one is that new cameras here because we had vacancy savings in my department. I've had a director for three years, so we were able to save some money and use it very needed. Um, so I can actually again, you can see lots of shots that aren't quite there. You know, they just the balls out of the picture. That's not that interesting. That's a little better, but you can't see his face very really well. Um, That's a little soft. That's not that interesting again. Arms block your face when they shoot, but then you find the one frame that you like. And that's the one you prop and you get down with the information you need. So you can see the image that you're seeing is a, is a cropped image. This is the one right before that. So that's all cropped. I got rid of the extra instant information. That's what I want. Center, center, center. See, this is the touch point? Yes. Okay. I can't scroll. I don't know how to do that. Oh, okay. Program I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so, again, like when I shoot a basketball game, I'll shoot anywhere from three to five hundred images. And uh, I had to go through that in an hour after the game and pick out the best ones. And it's a little challenging. Uh, but, you know, and then when I pick the best ones, I got to crop them and color correct them and save them. That's the other thing. Color correction is something you can do in Photoshop, which uh, you, you take a picture. If you just took a picture in this room without uh, any kind of flash or anything, those, those lights are fluorescent lights, they're going to make everything look green. You're going to have a green cast to it. A lot of modern cameras have color correction processing in them that corrects most of that, but you can still get it sometimes. And if you're in uh, out the right sunlight, uh, it's not going to show up much at all because most cameras are designed to be shot from the bright sunlight. 
Uh, but it's usually in relighting like this, or if you have multiple lighting, then there's windows, that the window, which is yellow, that the brushes, which is green, and, and we got a, a lamp over here, that's clear, they're extremely And so those things come in, and suddenly you have like on one side of the base, they're green, the other side they're yellow. You can fix a lot of that in Photoshop. So, so basically, so you get the idea. I shoot like 50 images. I got to pick out some for a and pop them perfect. And again, you're trying to tell stories. So you're trying to say what happened with that game that night. And. Uh, it's not always <laughs> the basketball game, it might be real activities. Which <clears throat> dancing. And like I said, cropping <coughs> can do a good picture and a bad picture. If you look at this whole image, it, there's a whole lot going on up the top and down below that have nothing to do. To me, they just they were just distractions, like the crowd in the background, the floor in the foreground. So I, I want to just isolate the, the, the two answers, so that's what I did. And I think that's the, an image that was pretty average and made it interesting. So cropping is a huge, huge, easy way to make an image that And peripheral, peripheral stuff going on the edge is always fun. Adds a lot to the story. It's not just a basketball game, it's an event. People are there to have fun. Cheerleaders who are usually in my way. That's why I take the show. And that's. And if you're just talking about good photography, uh, to me, this image is way better than a lot of the other ones you saw. Because there's. This is a, a, one of those moments where I captured something through sports stuff happening, and I really like that. It's, to me, it's called peak action, it's that you want in sports. Uh, but again, sports is a pretty small part of what I do, about 20% of what I do. Uh, then it's like the publication, a big thing, the magazine stuff, a big thing. Event shots like uh, one of this concert, Grasshopper Class, the big little concert. Um, no country fans here. Oh, country fans. Grasshopper Class. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the big fan of the guy, especially because he's shooting stuff. But I'm only allowed to shoot the first three songs, or two songs, these things. Uh, then they pick you up, you know, that's a standard thing for concerts if you're a photographer. Uh, you get Two to three songs, and then they can, because they don't want the guys all sweaty and gross at the end of the concert. They want them all nice and pretty at the beginning of the concert. <laughs> so, do you stay and enjoy the concert today? They, they, they usually let me go hang out in the rafters or something, but yeah. if they, they see me pick up the cameras, I have had guys come over and threaten to take my cameras away. <laughs> uh, the Rolling Stones, wow, they were really kidding. They, uh, yeah, they, uh, first of all, just to get them to shoot, it was hard. I had to, I read a whole reason that I was going to do with the photographs. I had to agree that they were only going to be used in our publications. I can't sell them. I can't even give them to people. I have great photos of Mick Jagger uh, and Keith Richards. I can't use them for anything. Just be used in our publication, and that's the lot of use I signed them in my book. Apparently, they're, they're so good at this uh, rock and roll that some t shirts they were selling when they came to town. And they did been okay with the Stones. The Stones had a, like five big, really guys from Rock and Rock Reviews and clear their shelves up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, took, took it all out. So you can't sell this to you with other race or sales. They're, they're pretty serious about it. <laughs> so these guys, they, they weren't too bad. They three, I guess, two songs the Leech event, uh, first guys, uh, what do they call them? Yeah. Van Perry. Van Perry. Who I thought were better than Rascal Flats, but that's just me. Um, and then two songs of Rascal Flats. So these are these are just the raw images. Again, you can see, of course, this is an exaggeration of the lighting thing. 
power thing turns pink because of the lights that are hitting her. And then these kind of settings, you want that because it shows where, where they're at what they're doing. Um, I was right in the front row. This is an example of using that fisheye lens. You really do it. I, I, I was like this far. It looks like I'm a lot farther away from her, but I was right, right there. Um, Heads. Everything's a little more fine tuned. The crop is a little better, tighter. And again, even when I'm in a gallery that does do this after the concert, I didn't put all these images either. We had one, but I pretty much pick the ones I like to edit, and then I go through those even, and I'll pick not the ones with all seven or eight images. Actually, this, uh, this was like the fourth song. I wasn't going to just take this picture at you. And the other group came on. Little edge rockers. Go like that. That's the other thing I want to tell you. If you're telling a story or something, and um, want want to give it, especially especially with men, uh, the people who, who haven't been there to, to see what it's like to be there, uh, do this. You see all the tight shots I took of them. I went upstage and I was right there in the face. I used a long lens and I was right there in the face with a long lens. Back up and take an overall shot. Uh, keep in mind that you want to lose everything. Uh, so I went up to the bleachers and kind of get some more and take the shot. And so you don't just don't just focus on one area. Realize that uh, someone might want to see how cool the whole light show was. So you want to back up and speed up. So in any event, that's you know like that comes with those complicated pictures. The pictures of uh, the president speaking are kind of boring. Uh, so you want to back up and show the whole thing, and they help out and all that. It just shows, tells a better story. Um, so keep in mind when you're, when you're using it, you try and tell a story, and that's, that's all you're really trying to do. Um, so that's what I do. Um, do you guys have any questions about photography that uh, pertains to what you guys are trying to do? Because, because that's the other thing about photography. There's about 50 different kinds of photography, more than other different kinds of photography. Portrait photography, event photography. I started out with newspapers. I was giving that bio to begin with. I'm a journalism school graduate. Started out as a uh, journalism photographer. Was interning in Brazilian when I was still a student. Was uh, working with Brazilian after I graduated, and then went to the Great Falls Trip. Worked for a couple of papers after that, and I came back here. So I just wanted to be back here. I like it. So, family are here. So, um, that's, and I've been here 20 years, 20 plus years. And uh, I love it. I have the best job on campus. I mean, if you ask anybody, so I, I, I walk around. <coughs> Meet somebody for the first time and say, What do you do as a class photographer at the University of Montana? And the responses I get just, it's always the same, pretty much the same. What a great job. You get to take pictures all day. And I'm like, Yeah, it is a great job. There's a little more to it than that, but yeah, that's what I do. And I, I still tell people I have the best job on campus. Maybe not if you're using the pay scale, but other than that, I don't So it's a lot of fun. Um, I, I didn't recommend it. You get into it and find the work in it's the hard, hard deal. Especially with newspapers pulling it up the rank right now. So, any questions? So, when you take pictures, is there an average number you take to say, I want 10 shots? Should I take 100? Do I get 10%? Or is that not even a good rule of thumb? I don't think there's a rule of thumb. You know, like I shoot a football game, I might shoot 600 images. And I end up in a gallery of about 40. So, 
and that's but that's sports action, which yeah. is you have to go to most of you if you do. So you should have to go to the next complication. But I should barely miss hundred shots, and I got a gallery of the twenty. Um, it's so there's no rule of thumb really there. I would just say if you go into a thing and you can be, you know you need five to ten shots for something, just keep in mind, okay, I shot this, I shot that, I shot this guy. Uh, but I know I got three or four. I do that all the time, like uh, if I'm shooting a basketball, like a women's basketball game. So I, I know all the players, I know there's ten girls who usually play. And I'll say to myself, well, I know I got five shots, and I'm going to shot her, 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 her. So that's four different players. That's not enough. I need a couple more. So I, and I just kind of keep that running back my head. So you just kind of know what you have in mind at the end and keep aiming towards that point that you got it. It could be five hundred, it could be twenty. <laughs> but that's, like, so that's the glory of the visual you can shoot. Uh, to the as you want. If you're doing full well, then you're not going to use what the leaving in the days of the film. You can think that way because film is expensive. And I will change black and white when I start. You were supposed to bring your questions for him to answer. You didn't have any sense. I have more, but I will have all the questions. I have a question. How many, how many memory cards do you carry with you on batteries for the camera? I carry about five. Five or six. And the size of each movie film? Uh, that biggest one is eight, eight, eight uh, gigabytes. Uh, no, wait, I, 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 I'm wrong. Sorry, I just got a 16 gigabyte one. But uh, I have, these are the two main cameras I use. And this one actually, the newest one, has a Kind of card I've never even seen before, which I haven't even been able to buy yet because when you only order from one place, and I haven't done it yet because I'm perfectly happy with this one, which doesn't cost that much. And one the new technology that they made for this other slot is very expensive, and it's supposed to be way faster and all this stuff. But I don't need it, so I don't want to do it <laughs> until I have until it's readily available for everybody. Um, but I have. These two cameras are used a lot. We have two other cameras that are Nikon G700, G7000s, which also do high definition video because we have some people in our office who do video. And they're, they're more less expensive cameras, and, but they do just about the same stuff. They just don't do it as fast or you know, as great a processor or things like that. Um, and those, those cameras, I think we have 16 gigabyte cards in each. Two slots, so each camera has 32 gigs in it, um, which, if you're shooting video, is a lot. Yeah, is there a difference between using uh, the lens that has the effect of the eye fish and using an effect in Photoshop that makes the eye fish work? Yeah, uh, with the Photoshop techniques, you can distort it pretty much any way you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be the, the Fish eye is going to be even all the way around. It's pretty hard to do that in Photoshop to make it even distorted. You can, you can, just, you can, you can do it. You just grab the center. There's this cool feature uh, called uh, what's it called? I just do it. I don't think about it. That's the problem. Um, let's take a picture.
<laughs> and you, can, you know, you can do it. You can mess people up all you want, um, or you can. Uh, I'm using CS5, so this is a little different. Okay. Both of the different images handle the liquify feature. Yeah. Digital relay will tell you all about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, transform. So you can uh, alter images in other ways, like. You would think what you want. And then, uh, stay in the screen, perspective of the world. I mean, you can, so, so you can do this stuff in Photoshop. You can make that fish eye effect if you want. It's not going to be perfect, but you're probably right. If you pay for Photoshop, so you can have a lot cheaper than buying a $1,200 lens mm -hmm. just to do it. <laughs> so, uh, but I would say one of the big differences is when you have that, that fisheye lens and you're up close like you were, you were able to photograph yeah. more of the stage. And if you were up there with a regular lens, you wouldn't be able to get that. So you're not going to be able to fake that in Photoshop. You're missing that information. Take a look there. You can see just how amazing it is, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that the big one. The lens? Uh, 6,000. Just for the lens? Yeah. And then 6 for the... For that body in your box. That was good thing for those Yeah, this one is a little cheap. This one's about 1,200. Because the deceptor is old and it doesn't do video. And it still is just too much. So like I said, I, I just brought this stuff to show you what, what is used in the... How much is the action camera? Which camera? The Dalton National. Apple lens. This one's about 1200. The G700. It's, it's old now. It doesn't do video. And pretty much, you don't buy a camera without video anymore. So, like, if you're just taking pictures for fun and you like to have nice quality pictures, how much would you be, like, looking at the spec for a new camera? Oh, I would think it's something pretty nice for five or six hundred dollars. With the lens, with the lens, and that's probably not the lens that has a zoom feature. So, is there a particular brand that you like over others? The leading, the leading cameras are Nikon and Canon, of course. So, so I would say Sony's catching up really fast in a lot of ways. Um, uh, then there's a lot of brands which we're really into, but Canon and Nikon are the only two. If you're from Germany, you're probably like that. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, that's Okay. So when you have the memory card, did there is that you download it to a computer and store everything on a computer? Yeah. Then? Okay. Yeah, my my carry. I I don't have a computer today. I left at home, but I have a, a laptop thing there that I can sign the laptop in and carry. Uh, adapter things like the buggy, any card I want, and this card or compact flash card, and now I'm going to upload to my computer. I made it so I can do it anywhere I can because, like, I uh, was to Albuquerque last year for the NCAA tournament, and I had to upload those to halftime, so I popped, just go do it, upload it. Uh, they just used to put it right So, yeah, it, it's, it's become a, you know, it used to be, when I started out, you had to go in the dark room, you know, film, process the film, which took a couple hours, and then you had to make prints, which took a couple more hours. Uh, so, immediate gratification took time. You didn't, you know, you didn't get anything right away. Now it's all, you took the picture, why can we see it? Can we see it? It's going to be up on the internet in an hour? Half an hour, and uh, that's really great that you can do that. I and mean, it's, it's awesome that we can. That's that's one of the luxuries of it. You can just have an ethnicity and have it out instantly. Um, the, the 
drawback, I would say, to digital is people think that because you can get that one image up really fast, that you can do everything really fast. And, and you can see when I shoot a football game and I shoot 600 images, I have to go through them all. I, and pick out a kid. Because I shot, because I'm using digital, I probably shot uh, 300 more images than I would have if I was using film. So I got more to look at, more to choose from. So the actual process in time isn't all that great. I have to get a couple of images up really fast, like 40 images up really fast, but I still have to go through all those images again, edit them all, and then give them one of the athletic parts so they can use them in the next year's publication. So I still spend a lot of time technically in the art, but not something that comes. <laughs> is, that, is there a place on the university website uh, where you can view pictures specifically? Or? Yeah, uh, there's a couple spots. Um, the the Athletic Department has their own. I mean, once they just go click on their web, the gogreens.com, and they, the game just happened, you click on the story, it says read more. And then there's a, if there's a gallery, I don't know what I cover game that's going on this one, but if there's a gallery, let's say, that have a little click to a gallery and click the page. That's for them. For uh, what we're doing in university relations, where I work, is we're really using Facebook a lot more. So if you're a friend to the University of Montana, you'll have a link that will show up on your Facebook account showing the gallery you put up. Um, we also have a, a, a space for my university relations site where you can order prints if you want to look at a bunch of images, basically standard images of the University of Montana. But, uh, and then the, the, the main U of M webpage has a banner photo that changes. Right now it's been changing about every two weeks. Uh, we have a brand new vice, associate vice president of marketing who is a web guru kind of guy. Yeah, Mario. Mario. Mario Scholsky, mm -hmm. who is going to revolutionize our homepage. So be ready in about a month and a half to see a whole different kind of homepage uh, for the U of M webpage. And uh, it's going to be, he's, he wants to have a big images, one big image at, uh, all the time, and change it about every week. So we have an image about every week. And each image has to have kind of a story to go with it. So, so I'm going to be doing more. <laughs> um, which is cool because I like the fact that they're going to be big images. So, yeah. so would you say that the University of Montana has been focusing more on marketing and this year, one of the other years, just trying to like repair the image. Repair? <laughs> yes, I don't know. I don't know if that's like that. Now we're getting into the not really photography, but uh, are they putting more like money in the marketing? Do they want more pictures from you and stuff like that? Or? They 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 are starting to realize that the the web is way bigger than. Um, Making pamphlets standing out of this. So they're using the web more than you know, ever. Yeah, it's. it's uh, I don't know if you guys probably know this, but my son's a senior in high school right now. We get something from MSU every week in the mail. Try to get him to go there. And we don't do that here because we can't afford it. And apparently they have a lot more money to spend on that kind of stuff. So what, what we're trying to do to counteract their marketing, the uh, stuff in the mail. Uh, is use the web, which we have access to, which we don't have to spend more money on. We can put stuff up and sort of try to make a bigger presence <coughs> on the internet for us. And I don't think that we're trying to repair our image as much as we are trying to uh, 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 just make everybody aware of what we can write here because everybody's been stopped around what we did wrong. Yeah. And we want, we want to say, okay, here's what we're doing. These are good things, good things. We want, we want you to hear more about that. We don't want you to hear as much about the five guys who did something wrong. You know, that's, it's... Totally agree with you. So, it's, it's, uh, that's kind of where, where our aspect has been. And, and of course, we want to give the word out that we're taking actions to make sure those kind of things are happening. Uh, and, and the university has been very proactive in my, my opinion. Matter, so. We thought about the camera that automatically sends the photos to the cloud, and there's a software program in the cloud that goes through them and decides which ones are the good. Well, is there a program that, that actually will pick which ones it likes? <laughs> uh, we thought about that. Oh, um, I know right now there are ways, like I can 
and shoot at a football game and have a, a this little attachment that puts on my camera that will instantly send it up to um, to the cloud, yeah. And basically, my ed an editor somewhere else has a link to that, and he can have an image instantly, and he can post, edit, and post what he wants. I don't, I don't think the cloud itself will ever take a choice out of the that action. But, but, but yeah, it's totally possible to do that now. I think, as a matter of fact, most like, NFL games and stuff are doing that all the time. They have a guy up in the booth who's the guy's taking pictures and they're coming up to his, his computer rack rather than probably doing it. So it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely happening. It's just, uh, it's, it, when it comes down to us, it's, I would love to do that, but I don't have the manpower to do it, or the money to pay the guy to do it. So, write, write the software program that does it. Well, I'm not testing it. <laughs> I wish I could. So, how many megapixels, or do you think that you save your pictures and you post them on the web. So, is it high quality JPEG? I save everything as high as I can okay. um, on my computer. And when, goes, when you post things on the internet or a lot of soft, a lot of programs on the internet automatically adjust them and make them lower resolution so they fit even better. Mm -hmm. um, you can also do that in Photoshop. That's a feature. That, the name of the program, but it's another side program in Adobe that will save images and correct them so they fit better on the internet. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that some on the other end, if they click on the link to it, they don't want to have to wait 10 seconds for an image to open. They want to pop them right away. Most uh, programs that you load stuff up to does that pretty automatically. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, sometimes I see a picture of a person and the background, everything's moving so fast, or sometimes they can capture the movement of light. Yeah. Things, uh, how, how can you do that? Uh, it's, it's, it's called, <clears throat> it's your shutter speed. Um, and this, this is it's a technical part of the target, which I didn't want to try to do today. But uh, when you said you, most cameras now are all automatic, and I mean, you, you guys are probably shooting everything pretty automatic. But, uh, if I wanted to shoot like a hummingbird flying, which I have done, uh, and, and stop the action of its wings, I have to shoot it at a super high shutter speed, which is one, let's say I'm taking a picture of sports action, I will never shoot it at a shutter speed slower than one five hundred, one one five hundred of a second. That's, that will stop the action of pretty much of any human doing anything, um, physically, uh, unless they're just really fast. Maybe the same ball too. But uh, if you're shooting like something like that, like a uh, hummingbird, something that's so fast, yeah, you've got to shoot like one, one, two thousandth of a second. And that will stop that bird's wings when you put the fish in. And better cameras have higher shutter speeds to do things like that. Uh, the university has a high speed frame movie camera. Uh, the, 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 what's that called? The Bird Laboratory out of the Fort. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And that uh, was research on birds. And one of the guys out there also does research on hunting birds. And, and he has this movie camera that shoots, you know, how many frames a second? And it's like, it's a, it's a scene of like 2,000 frames a second. And so he can totally stop the action of this bird in flight and see each frame of it. So they can track what's happening with the bird's wing. So there's some, it's an amazing piece of machinery that I'm sure it costs a lot. Um, do you know if there's anywhere on campus that they like check out nice cameras? I mean, not like that nice, but like I would love to like mess around with them, but obviously I'm not gonna spend like thousands of dollars just to try it out. You know, like it, you pretty much have to be a J school thing, really. Yeah. They, they have a, quite, a, quite an array of equipment. Actually, they have better equipment than I do for a long time. Really. And uh, the students that are able to check out this stuff. So I just got to be friends with them. Well, you, you, you can go to MCAT. Figure that out. What's that? MCAT, you remember that? Yeah. They, I think if you like take a class, 
Yeah, I used to be on the board of MCAT, so you can go to MCAT and they have video cameras and yeah. still cameras, and you take a class at 25 bucks to become a member, and they yeah. make you take a class, and you have access to all their equipment. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're on uh, Spruce, yeah. right on the corner, right there. Yeah. Yep. And they have all like the nice cameras. Yeah. Yeah, they got the new 5Ds and stuff. Really? Wow. Yeah. It's the Missoula like, Community Access. Do you know why the classes on campus that like their the pod reflects the picture shit whatever, but like kind of arts, I don't know how to ask, but like just just for fun in my classes. Do you know if there's anything like that here? There are there are in the art, but yeah. you have to take the US. Really? Yeah. Yeah, like the you know, the art classes. And then journalism is they just they they do basically journalism class. Yeah. And they can do kind of specific ideas of what they want to shoot rather than kind of every time. But I think in the summer the media arts department offers digital photography yeah. for non majors and stuff. For sure. I think the, the media arts department by the way is amazing. They're doing amazing things over there. I I, I'm struck. I've been quite decent classes from them next year because that was they're doing saving our stuff. That's really cool. Really? Yeah, that's very cool. So like, if you if you if you're doing a project, like, are you a marketing student? No, I'm not. Uh, nice. What? MIS. MIS. Measure of Emergencies. Okay. Um, if you're doing a project, you need a, a somebody who's a student shooter to do the job. I would go talk to that because I can't even do the project. They do great work. I'm amazing. Some stuff like that. Cartooning. Really? Yeah. Cool cartoons. It's just amazing. So there are. That's something to always keep in mind, especially if you're doing projects and you help in certain areas. There's other aspects of campus where it's just like you, you know, you just hook up and that's but it's also you can take some classes through the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, and they have photography classes, different types, you know, landscape, people, whatever. And they're, I think, like $25 million in the last four or five weeks. Really? Sometimes they have one whole class just on Saturday, also. Mm-hmm. I've actually been to teach that class, I just didn't have time to do it. Yeah. 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 Then did you talk yeah, about yeah. the Rocky Mountain School of Photography? Yeah, the yeah. Penn West has some money to go to the Rocky School of Photography. <laughs> and they're really good. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm always the best at the work. Yeah, Missoula is actually kind of a, a, a little bit of a mecca for photography. Look at the Rocky Mountain School of Photography. There's some teachers there. There's some chops coming around from all over the world. So, anything else? So How am I doing? You're doing great. I'm just going to say, so <laughs> the major things I just wanted to, if you were going to sum everything up, the thing to take the best photos would be change your perspective. Yeah, your I, I mean, yeah, I, I think that's the simplest advice you can have change your perspective. Keep in mind that think about how everybody views the world every day. Try to make it different in, in your team. And uh, that's the best advice I think you yeah. Um, give them something different to look at than what they see every day. Whether that's changing the angle, changing perspective, um, point of view. Uh, I've seen people do things with uh, have you ever seen the little GoPro cameras, the video ones. Yeah. I've seen people doing things with that that just I'm so impressed because it's, it's usually not a photographer who's using those. It's just people who have a creative idea. And they're like, oh, this would be really cool. I'll put it in here. And I show this perspective, you know, uh, I'll put it inside the tiger's cage. So when the tiger comes up to it, we can really see it better, you know, or, or inside the dead animal the tiger's eating. You know, that that's that's the kind of thought process you kind of need to have if you really want to make sure that wow somebody that's that sort of different perspective in your hand. And if you go on YouTube and you just see what people are doing and it's close your mind, it's Kids who are 12 years old are coming up with things that you just like, wow, that, that is so creative and it's so cool. Have you uh, seen the new Google Glass? 
I don't think I have to help. You should Google that. I should Google that. Yeah, this is going to change it. What is it? It's you can just bring it up right here. Yeah, it's right up this. Yeah. You should just play the video. It's really yeah. cool. As a photographer, I think you really enjoy it. Because it takes you from a group perspective. It's, uh, oh, it's called Google Glass? Google yeah. Glass. It kind of look weird, but I mean, cool idea. Yeah. Go to the video. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Here you are. Just whatever you want. I don't know. Where it would be. YouTube. Up the very top. Yeah, that's all on the black bar. You can press YouTube. You're totally in the black bar. On the black bar. Oh, yeah. the oh, black bar. Oh, you ready? Third one down, or hit the skip app. That you wear, and then yeah. it projects yeah. the information, and then you pay it here's and it uh, yeah. has a camera. Yeah. See, that, and that's, that's why it, it, it's so hard to keep trust with all this stuff because it's happening so fast, it's changing so fast. And uh, you guys are way better at it than I am. Um, you guys are way to this changing, changing uh, visual age. Uh, for me and probably for you, it's a bit of a challenge every time mm-hmm. something new comes up to us. We have to we have to wrap our head around it and get used to it. And uh, my son, 17, 18, which you're 18, he uh, does things on the computer that I think I know what I'm going to do. Is, Don't add me like this. <laughs> Go up. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but that's great because it, it, to be better in today's world, you just have to do all this stuff. And like I said, I guess I just gotta keep learning, try to keep, keep up. You know, it's hard. And something like that, wow. I don't know what, what, what kind of resolution you're getting with that stuff. Can, what's it gonna be able to use? I'm gonna be high quality that you can use it for uh, publications too and stuff. I think it's 720p, so yeah. whatever that. Seven twenty, so it's not high enough. It's that's close. Mid death. It's only gonna get better. We can start adding phone features to the thing too. We can start talking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like at least it's in the corners, and like taking over your entire vision. Yeah. I, I don't want my children now running around. Yeah. I'm running around with 
but you said it earlier, you had you, you got like it's tough for you to keep up with the times with the new camera and all that. But that's like never been more true. Like in today's time with technology and everything, it's you really do have to conform and value, you know, especially in your business, you know, you just constantly have to be on top of your game. I went to a conference in Portland the other day about advanced and secondary education. And there's a communications track which I went into, which all these other tracks for finances and stuff. But, uh, and yeah, I just watching some of the things that schools are doing, uh, higher, higher education schools are doing to attract students is, is amazing. Uh, and and they, the only thing that was really interesting to me was there's no way to quantify it. Nobody can say how many people are responding to their digital imagery on their websites. I mean, they can see how people are clicking on the website, but they don't know. Uh, they're using something called content. Uh, what's that? Content analytics, or something? You know, content to, trying to attract people with content rather than hitting them in the face. Content advertising, it's not direct advertising. Uh, so it's like, it's like the commercials you see where, by the end of the commercial, you don't even know what the commercial is about until they tell you what they end. Yeah, it was, it was the, the content was what's supposed to catch your eye. And then uh, at the end, you can figure out. But if you watch all the things that Red Bull sponsors, uh, you'll see Red Bull images in all the things that they do, but you'll never hear them say, buy Red Bull. Uh, they just won't do it because it's, it's content. They're trying to get you interested in all the things like the cool skydivers and the, you know, the, the, the kayak and stuff. And they don't want, they don't want to slam in their face. So content advertising is a, is a big new thing now that everybody's trying to use. There's no way to quantify it. How well it works, and that's that's one of the analytics kind of things that, that uh, all these people at universities kept asking. Well, how do we know if this is working? With it? I said, well, it's what everybody's doing now. Right? It's what you see everywhere, so it's got to be working. <laughs> but there's no way to quantify. It. So it's it's uh, yeah, everything's changing all the time. And that, that, like that Super Bowl ad with the, the farmers. Yeah. That's a, a very good example of that, except the kind of very independent little big shiny trucks. You ask me, but uh, kind of just kind of Facebook app. But that was, that's a really good example of content there that they're doing now. So, any other questions? We really appreciate you having to talk to us and sharing this.